What's up everybody? It's Andy with LightenUpAndShoot.com and today I'm going to show you guys how I do my favorite black and white conversion of all. There's a million ways to do them um, but this is the one I use when it is absolutely detrimental. When it's either going to be printed and blown up really really hot, really really big, when I want to give it to a friend, when I really love an image and I really want to do the best job possible, this is what I do. So it's a little bit longer than normal, you know, a lot of plugins and a lot of uh, software like Photoshop and Camera Raw will let you do it really quick and easy, but I love to take complete control when it means a lot to me, so uh, that's what I'm going to show you. That introduction was about as long as this tutorial, so sorry about that. Anyways, uh, first thing we do is we start off with a color image, always with a color image. I never shoot in black and white because that just limits me to that black and white conversion from the camera, which I hate. Um, so, color image always. Uh, first step, you should know by now. Copy of the background layer always. That way I have a reference to the original. And then when I merge my layers all the way at the end, I can always uh, exclude that background layer. I love it. Uh, Control J on a PC, Command J on a Mac will copy that background layer. All right. Once that's copied, I go over to my adjustment panel, or my adjustment panel, my adjustment layer. Click on it and go to black and white. And here you're going to see that it creates this automatic mask. And um, here's my adjustment layer panel is open. This is awesome because I can always come back to it and adjust later. And if anybody that's familiar with Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw is going to see this, it's, it's very, very similar. It's actually, the algorithms and everything are exactly the same, so it doesn't, um, it doesn't change at all. And it works like this. Do you see how everything's color here? Red, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas? Well, our image has reds, greens, cyans, blue, a little bit of magenta, uh, and yellows. So when I adjust one of these, when I adjust these greens, for example, see how the bowl is green? It's just going to adjust the green. So it's going to give me like this targeted ability on these black and white images that are really color. And I'm going to be able to move it around and change it around each of these color settings. Like, for example, this bowl is a little bit distracting. So I want to darken it up because she's wearing a white shirt and she's, you know, I want the focus on her face. I'm not really too interested in the bowl. It's just part of the scene. So all I have to do is just darken up that bowl and lighten her up just a little bit. And guess what? Your eye is now directed towards her which is awesome so I can do that just just lighten her up now this image was taken in the Amazon this is just the shoulder for shoulder on the back a little bit just make it a little bit darker um, and so I don't want it to look like it was a digital camera photo I want it to look like old school very cool um, you know I just don't want it to be like this completely black and white conversion so, once I'm happy with my settings here, that uh, looks pretty good to me. Maybe if I lighten our face up just a little, little bit. Let me lighten that up just a little bit. Maybe make these greens just a little bit darker. That looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with that. The next thing I'm going to do is, like I was telling you guys, I want this to be an older looking image. Um, and if we zoom in, you're going to see that it's, it's a pretty good black and white conversion. But you see how it's, it's just too, it's too black and white. I don't want it to be that way. I want it to have a little bit of a tint. Uh, even old photos, it's either the photo paper, the aging, uh, any of that stuff will give these black and white images some color. Uh, when you print, make sure that your printer prints in black and white because it needs all those ink cartridges to actually print a good black and white image. Uh, and we're going to add a little bit of tint by going to the adjustment layer, photo filter. And in photo filter, you're going to see that you have a warming filter is your default or you could uh, select this drop down and choose all these old school filters or you could choose your own custom color click on this and just change it around to whatever you guys want it to be I like the warming filter it does a pretty good job and what I do is I come down here to my density and I increase it all the way to 100 I know it looks weird and freaky but I really like to go from a lot to a little instead of, instead of from a little to a lot. So um, let's push it all the way to 100%. Make sure that your preserve luminosity is still checked because if not, it flattens out the image really badly. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is highlighted, my photo filter, 
and I'm going to go to my blend mode, and I'm going to change it over soft light. Immediately, that warming filter fuses into those pixels below, those black and white pixels, making it look very old. This might be a little bit too old. So the way I start uh, decreasing its age is just lowering its opacity of that, la of that, of that layer. And I'm just going to lower it until somewhere that it looks happy, and then I'm just going to do a before and an after. I just always want to do a quick before and after just to see how that looks. So I think 30% is pretty good. Remember, we're in adjustment layers, so I can always come back. Like, for example, I, all I have to do is click on that black and white and come back and adjust that. All I have to do is click on this photo filter and adjust that. Um, that's one of the very big benefits of using adjustment layers. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I've got the color. I'm missing a little bit of contrast, but the contrast I'm going to deal with at the end. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I want to add some grain. There's a billion grain plugins out there. Again, these are one of the things that I like to control myself. <laughs> control freak, what do you want me to do? Um, so I do this by going to a new layer. I create a new layer on top of everything else. And I'm just going to rename it to noise. All right. And then I'm going to fill this in with white. I need to make sure that I'm using white. You see right now how I have black as my foreground and gray as my background. A shortcut to reset it is D, as in dog. Now you can see I have black and white. And to switch these two, it's X, and it'll switch them. Cool, huh? All right, once X is selected, oh, here's another shortcut. I can either use Alt Backspace to fill it with my background, I mean with my foreground color, or Control Backspace to fill it with my background color. Okay? So Alt Backspace, foreground color. Control Backspace, background color. Or you can always just come here to the paint bucket, make sure that it's your foreground color, and click on it, and it's filled with white. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to Filter, and then I'm going to go to Artistic, and I'm going to go to Film Grain. When I'm in Film Grain, this window is going to open up with Film Grain, which is awesome, but I'm not going to use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little drop down. I just don't like the Film Grain. It just looks too digital. So I click down on this on this film grain, and I go down to where it says grain. You see that? It's just a weird color grain. And you have another drop down here that you can choose a whole bunch of different types of grain. I really like to use either clumped, contrasty, or enlarged. For this, let's use enlarged. And here, uh, I always like to raise my intensity as much as possible uh, just to get that color out. Don't worry about that. We're going to change that later. But I just like for it to pop a little bit more. And you can always raise your contrast. Click OK. And now you're going to have a big layer of green. Color green at that. Which sucks. Because color green is not going to be able to help us. So what we need to do is we need to desaturate that. And we can either come up here to image. Adjustments. Hue and saturation. Or we can just hit control U on a PC. Or command U on a Mac. Make sure that the saturation is all the way down to negative 100. We click OK. Now my image is desaturated. I have the grain the way I like it. And all I do now is make come to back to my noise layer, change it over to soft light. It's looking a little too light, but look at the grain. I love it. I mean, it looks like really cool black and white grain. I mean, look at her arms. There is no mistake in that. It's completely different than noise. Um, it's just complete grain. The only thing I don't like is that we lost a little bit of contrast in this image because the white, when we switched it over to soft light, actually made it lighter. So I could try overlay or multiply. Multiply looks really, really cool. Let's see what overlay did because I already said it. Ooh, not good. So let's go back to multiply. That's looking much, much better. And guys, you see in her shirt, we might have a little bit too much. So you know what? Let's go back to soft light. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's a little bit... See how it's evaporating from the whites? That's really what I want to see. Uh, so soft light is going to be for me. So now... We have the grain, we have the black and white conversion. The only thing we have a problem right now is a little bit too much contrast. So I'm going to click on my 
uh, adjustment layers one more time go up to curves and I'm just gonna lower this lower my blacks and maybe raise my whites and then I'm just gonna keep my whites just lower the blacks just know guys these are your darks these are your lights this is your middle this is this is reset at zero if you go higher on your blacks here you're just telling it to push your blacks higher make them make them lighter if you go down you're telling them to make them darker and these are your highlights around here so uh, the higher it goes that's your famous s curve the lighter your whites are the lower it goes the lower your lights are okay okay so i really like to lower my blacks just a little bit really really liking that guys i mean it looks really really cool okay so it's pretty much done the only thing i'd really like is to have your eyeball uh, really lead into her face and see her her face a little bit more and I'm gonna do that with dodging and burning I'm gonna show you a little quick trick now that this tutorial is taking so long might as well do it so what I do next is I click on new layer okay make sure it's at the top make sure that my black is my foreground color do you remember how to flip them around X you're right and I'm going to choose a brush. B is my shortcut, or just click on the brush tool. Make sure it's really big. Okay? I like to go as big as possible. Make sure my hardness is all the way down. And all I'm going to do is paint. And I'm not going to paint like a vignette kind of way. I just, I'm just going to paint. I just want the eye to go in there. I don't want. I'm dodging and burning technically. Okay? You newbies need to remember what it's like to actually dodge and burn if it's a little bit too much then guess what all I have to do is lower my opacity and that guys is really leading my eyeball into that shot I mean look at the before and the after might be just a little bit too much right now right there I think is good and the thing is that this does not look like a vignette it's just your eyes are just being led into this image and if we get rid of all these other layers and we actually see our vignette, I mean, you see that? Come on. That's not really a vignette. That's just dodging and burning. So, okay. And that, guys, I think is a very beautiful black and white conversion. If anything happens at the end and you're like, oh, you know what? Maybe it's a little bit too yellow still. Just click back on your photo filter and just lower your opacity yet just a little bit more. Uh, if you're not happy with the contrast of the image you could always just go back and click on it if you're not happy with your black and white conversion just click on it and it'll just you can just micro adjust all the way till the end until you're completely happy with it and then check this out we're gonna merge all these layers I'm gonna hold shift down click on the bottom layer right above my background layer command E on a Mac control E on a PC merges them all together and before and after a billion times better all right sorry guys really long tutorial but uh you know the black and white's really important to me i love it uh, that's just how i do it peace